How to find birds to photograph? Us wildlife photographers ask ourselves this question all the time. And in this video, you join me looking for birds to photograph on my scouting mission at Vistula River, looking for shorebirds. As well, I will share with you everything I learned about scouting over the last 10 years of doing it. So, if you're interested in that, keep on watching. And if you want to learn more about bird photography, subscribe. And, but how did we end up in this correct spot? Well, scouting doesn't start in the field, it starts at the desk. So let's see how it's done. Yes, finding birds starts before going into the field. Firstly, you need to establish where do you want to go. And how do you do that? Well, there are various ways, but my favorite one is using websites such as eBird. It's a website on which you can find a lot of information about birds in your area and local hotspots, as well as information where the birds arrive at the certain hotspot and everything you would want about bird watching in the certain area. In this way you can simply explore the map and find something that interests you. Although in some countries such as Poland it's not as thoroughly used as in the UK and in, and in the US. Other great source of information are Facebook groups. And if you join your local Facebook group about the nature of the area, there is high likelihood that you will find some interesting uh, spots that people share, because people tend to share their locations. Another amazing way of trying to establish where to look for birds is reading books, studying the biology of the subjects, because this way you can pick what habitat they like to live. For example, if you know that at some fish ponds there have been observed little bitterns, but you look for them at the water, not in the reeds, then you might not see any. And if you know where to look for them, then in the field it will be easier for you to find them. When you have the idea what species are you going for and the area that you want to visit, I highly recommend checking Google Maps. You can uh, first start by just simply scrolling the satellite view, then you can put the guy on to see the area from the Google Street view, and I usually finish with Google Earth trying to see how it looked over the years. So in this case we'll be looking for shorebirds. So I know they like uh, those sandy beaches near on the river. So I just scroll through the years in the areas that look promising and I see how the sand on the beach looks like. But that's in Google Earth, you can do that on Google Maps, so you need to download Google Earth, which is actually free, so that's great news. And then I switch to Google Maps to see the street view, how the trees are aligned, because my next tip is using Photographer's Ephemeris, which is an app providing you the access to um, where the sun rises and sets, which is perfect for planning your shots, because then you can simply um, plan the spot on the map and see at each day of the year when the sun rises and where it sets. It's very useful, especially when going for backlight. After you pick your spot and pick your spots to check out, then you have to go into the field and actually observe the birds yourself. So it's time to put in some kilometers in the car. For this trip, I drove 50 kilometers one way and 50 kilometers the other, which was pretty far for me. And uh, I would also, before leaving, I would recommend you picking sunny days because it's the days that you will not get any good pictures otherwise. So midday sunny days are perfect. Back to the field. So if you already drove to the spot, now it's important to find the birds and how it's easiest done by the ear. So learn the bird sounds, the songs, the calls, everything you might want to know. YouTube is a great source of the information. You just type name of a species, song, name of a species, call. And this way you can find all the sources all the information you might want and if you're walking down the perfect habitat of the bird then if you hear the song 
you final you're finally able to recognize it and locate the bird much easier than if you were only to look for it with your binoculars well now that we have arrived we just have to put in the kilometers and walk this part of the river and around it and see if we can find anything interesting Okay, I see some shorebirds and a lot of terns there, so we'll just walk down the river and sit and wait. When you finally spot the birds, it's important to just sit down with your binoculars and Spend some time with them. Look at them through your binoculars and try to analyze the movement patterns, where they like to feed, what, for example, from which spot they like to sing. And you just sit like 100 meters away from them and just patiently observe. Spending the time in a field is crucial, but watching the particular birds you want to photograph is even more crucial. Right now I'm sitting here because there is a b big flock of common terns, least terns, as well as some shorebirds, for example, wood sandpipers and common sandpipers. And I'm just sitting, f sitting here finding out where they move. This way, when I come here tomorrow, I will be able to position myself in the perfect spot and position my wide-angle camera in the spot to capture them, hopefully. When choosing a photo spot to lay down to photograph shorebirds, it's important you check the footprint, like this one's here. It looks like this here will be a good spot, so maybe that's where I will position myself when I come here, because I can see the birds are coming here close by. I hope you enjoyed this video, and now check out this photo guide through photographing birds in flight, because if you find the spot, you might want to be ready to photograph some birds in flight. See you soon, bye!